Welcome to Canada India Insight episode number 16. Um today's topic is very very relevant and uh, important especially for the 1.5 million or strong Indo-Canadian diaspora. Um the role of Indo-Canadian political leaders in Canada India relations is something most people are talking about lately. Uh to discuss this we have put together an impressive team Uh, of leaders um one second please um i am your host vipul jani president of canada india usa development forum and editor for canada india insight um shuvala majumdar program director and monk senior fellow for foreign policy at macdonald laurier institute in ottawa will moderate today's session shuvalai was a director of policy to canada's minister of foreign affairs from 2011 to 2015 and is a global director with harper and associates uh, since 2016 canada india usa development forum is a membership based uh, canadian not for profit organization that works on bilateral and trilateral relations impact media and events corporation is a media and events company that publishes canada india insight a monthly e paper and support the various events and activities of the forum ambassadors high commissioners consul generals cabinet ministers at the federal and provincial levels in all three countries senior business leaders mps and mpps participate in our events and conferences both virtual and in person canada india insight also has a youtube channel and a podcast and today's event will be posted on our youtube channel um podcast both our websites and in the canada india insight e paper coming out next week Before we begin let me recognize and thank all the IMX sponsors Tangentia One Place Skylink Capital Corporation Pavi Binning and Seneca College as well as members of the Canada India USA Development Forum one of our members Naga Sarath Pandurangi is helping us today with tech support um so thank you Naga for that today the leaders and speakers will be joining in and out uh, as i said earlier as many have other engagements also um, at the same time with uh, with the virtual world now people are busy with a lot of events even on the weekends um, so we will continue our discussions and uh, engage with them as and when they join um, it's a 90 minutes session up to 2:30 pm eastern time so with that let me invite our moderator for today's session Um, Shwala, Majumdar, to open the session. Vipul, thank you, and thank you for your team at uh, for your leadership on a range of issues. Uh, it's a real honor to be here to discuss a really important discussion around the participation of Indo-Canadians in Canadian political life. Um, we all know that when we think about the Pacific theater and Canada's status as a Pacific nation, uh, there are tremendous forces at play. particularly the rise of China and how partners and allies like Australia, Japan, India, the United States and others work and identifying Canada's place in that will rest heavily on the shoulders of the amazing panelists that we have and you have assembled today. So I'm very keen to kick off the conversation with less about me and much more about those who are participating here. Uh I see on my screen that we have past MP for Calgary Davinder Shori and present MP for Mississauga Bob Saroya uh present here and I was wondering if it might be appropriate Vipul if we start off by providing each of them a few minutes to share their thoughts about what their experiences have been like and what the reflections are you're breaking up Can you hear me now? 
Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're breaking up actually. Okay, hopefully you can hear me now. Yes. Very good, okay, thank you. Uh, I think it might be appropriate, Bob, for, for us to lead off with you as a sitting member of parliament and then to turn to Devinder. Uh, so Mr. Soroya, over to you, my friend. Hello, brother. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. Uh, I'm MP for Markham Unionville, uh, just for the record. Um, Not Mr. Saga, Markham, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Make no much difference. I just want to for the record. And Vinder Paji, always salute to you and uh, all my fellow political and chef lawyer and everybody else. And also, let me say thank you to Mr. Jen putting this thing together. All of us. We are from Indian descent, Indian diaspora. This is our job to be a Canadian, Canadian politician, lives in Canada. And also our job is to be make sure we work together hand in hand with India and Canada to make whatever we need to do, make it right. Canada is a beautiful country, the best of the best. Um, who welcome us, people like myself, who show, showed up to the shores here back in 1973, uh, 74. Um, um, it, it's the best country. And uh, the best part of Canada is they they give you with the open farm arm welcome welcome in this country. For example, all of us, uh, the Vinder Shori, myself, Param Gill, uh, 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 Gosal and many, many others came to this country and uh, we made it to the land of uh, milk and honey, if you want to call it something in the line. Um, can India also given a ton of to uh, this country, Canada. Uh, when we came in, especially when, when early days I came into the country, people, people would ask me, my turban, if I was born with it, for example, at the point I'm trying to make is it's a beautiful country, wonderful country, and they gave us they gave us the um, the chance to be up here where we are. Um, India also equally given a ton to this country. Um, all the politicians, the, the Indian diaspora born, Ujjal Dasanj, the premier, health and uh, health minister among in the federal federal side, <clears> and. Um, we are in uh, politics, we are the lawyers, we are the doctors, we are the business owners. We also people work in the farming industry, transport industry, many, many other industries. Uh, and I just, we, I will answer all the question, what the answer you want to question, but uh, I am here to stay uh, between India and, and Canada, whatever we can, combinedly, whatever we can do together, we will do it. Thank you, Mr. Shivloy. Thank you very much. Mr. Soroya, uh, I'd like to turn now to Devinder Shori and uh, to offer his reflections of his time in federal life and what it means for the Indo-Canadian community, plus his own experience in, in politics. And as I say that, I note that Amar Jot Sandhu is here. Hello, friend. Uh, we'll be setting you up to speak from a provincial level soon after. So thank you for, thank you for standing by. Devinder Ji, over to you. Well, Shub, thank you. And uh, Vipulji, thank you very much for the invitation. It, uh, I got this invitation uh, yesterday and I'm very delighted to see all the names uh, who are keen to work uh, promoting Canada-India relations. Uh, as, as, uh, you hit the nail, Shub, that uh, let me talk about my time in Parliament. And as I sat on International Trade Committee for six years or so, in a row and uh, one of the studies we conducted and also we visited India numerous times, not only with the, um, our prime minister, but also with, the, with our uh, trade minister and obviously our uh, all, all rounder minister, Mr. Kenny as well. So, so if, if we look at it, uh, uh, Bob, Bob, Bob talked, about, uh, talked about our background and, and obviously how proud we should be to be Canadians or in Canada. But at the same time, it's tremendous, tremendous opportunity. But if, if we can promote, really positively promote a relationship between India and Canada and then move it towards, uh, uh, towards trade as well, which, which in our government we have been very, very keen and show 
I, I, I believe you know way more than us, all, all of us, what we did and what you have uh, been doing continuously even after that. It is, it is extremely important. For us, it is more important because we, we can be conduit. We are Canadians. But we, we, we love India as, as much as we, uh, we love Canada. And it will be a win-win situation, not for you and me or uh, all of us, but for all Canada and for India. India, everybody knows that we got 1.3 billion um, uh, consumer population. And at the same time, when we look at ourselves, we, we have very, very close ties back home whether it is north, south, east, west, wherever we belong to. So we can utilize that. The problem I have been seeing, now I'll, hit, I'll come quickly to that. The problem I have been seeing that our reputation as Canada, because India, India is very sensitive, obviously very protective and very strong country. Let's not forget about it. We need them more than they need us. That's the reality. When we, when we talk about uh, if we want to cash their population, if we want to uh, use our services, if we want to uh, make some money out of India for Canada and, and for Canadians. So the issue I, I have been seeing and I believe I'm right that there, there are certain issues those hurt in the development of this positive relation between Canada and India. And obviously, everybody knows Khalistan is the major issue. For certain, some reason, for, 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 for the laws we have, for the church rights we have, we have, I mean, it's all, all is good. But unfortunately, uh, that there is very, very small population, very, very small population, which, uh, which simply give very, bad impression about Canada and they become hurtful. They become a hurdle in, in developing relationship. We we all and more more and more people we have to we have to brainstorm. We have to brainstorm that how do we how isolate that small portion. There are a vast majority of Indo-Canadians love Canada, love India, love to have positive relationship. So so I'm here to to, to hear basically uh, others' view, how do we how do we isolate that portion of our uh, Canadian population and so th so that the image gets clean? That's the reality. I, I have met Mr. For example, the uh, present uh, Prime Minister of India. I I have met during my time. I have met him eleven or twelve times, one to one, talking about business. Right, we we have visited so many. Uh, I mean, cham chamber members in India, business chamber members in India, whether it's in Mumbai or or somewhere in uh, Bangalore or somewhere. I mean, we we have worked. Our government, when we were in government, we worked really hard. We work, but at the same time, as I said, India obviously India India will deal with us only only if uh, if it is for the benefit of both countries, but. Before, before we reach to that point, this is what I felt, that this issue is a very, very bad issue, which actually does not encourage Indian counterparts uh, to, to be excited. And I look forward to hear, hearing from others. Well, thank you, Devinderji. Uh, powerful commentary about building from Bob's observation about how you both as immigrants have come and succeeded in our Canadian democracy, um, the powerful ties that we have to the homeland um, and how in so many ways, some of those issues can become distorted and impact our national life. Uh, I think we still have Marjot Sandhu, uh, MPP for Brampton West. Uh, I wanted to turn to him because I think it's nice that we started out in Markham and then went to Calgary and it's appropriate we go to Brampton now. Uh, Amarjot also holds the distinction of being a member of the provincial legislature as one of the first national students. So congratulations for having that particular distinction, Amarjot. Over to you. I mean, I'm keen to hear what your views are about your experiences in public life. Thank you so much, brother. Can you hear me? Yep. All right, thank you. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank my uh, good friend, Bipul Janiji, for giving me the opportunity uh, to meet you all virtually. And thank you for hosting uh, this important webinar 
uh, on the role of Indo-Canadian political leaders in uh, bilateral relations. It's also great to see uh, Bob Swayapaji, the Vindra Paji, and uh, obviously Prasad Pandaji. Uh, we had an opportunity to meet Mr. Panda uh, back in 2019 when he came to my uh, community barbecue. So thank you for that. Uh, what I'm today is, is largely shaped by Canada and India. And indeed, it's a proud moment for me to address this gathering today uh, as a member of provincial parliament, as a representative of Brampton West uh, at the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. I always say that India and Canada have very positive and long-standing uh, bilateral relations based on mutual interest and respect for each other. Uh, the dynamic and strong relationship between the two countries is deeply rooted uh, in people-to-people -people ties. A priority market for Canada, India is Canada's la ninth largest export market and 10th largest trading partner. Overall, India is the second largest source of international students in Canada and therefore India remains one of the largest source of immigrants. I have been such of, uh, one of such proud immigrants who landed in Canada uh, as an international student 10 years ago. And today I'm especially honored uh, to be the first international student uh, to be ever elected uh, to the provincial legislature in Ontario. The province of Ontario recognized uh, the future Canada and India share together and it has very successfully led two trade missions uh, in the past two years uh, when Minister Fideli went to India and Minister Todd Smith, uh, when he was a Minister of Economic Development. Uh, so India, uh, uh, Ontario wants to have a strong relation, uh, a trade relation with India. It's great to see that uh, Canada and India are undertaking uh, bilateral negotiations uh, toward both a comprehensive uh, economic partnership agreement and foreign investment promotion and, and protection agreement. Uh, India and Canada hold uh, regular ministerial dialogues on trade and investment as well as energy. Uh, Canadians of Indian descent uh, no doubt greatly contribute to the culture, prosperity and social fabric of the country and have been astoundingly uh, successful in fostering closer ties uh, between India and Canada. Uh, the Indo-Canadian community has a rich and proud history in our country and will uh, remain committed uh, to strengthen cultural and economic ties uh, between the two countries. Uh, today, a close collaboration uh, between both the countries is uh, particularly more important uh, in fighting uh, global changes uh, like climate change and the economic impacts uh, of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so it's uh, great to see that uh, uh, people like Bipul Jani is playing a vital role, uh, like bringing all the MPPs, MPs together uh, who can play a key role uh, in India's and Canada's relationship. Uh, so I thank you once again. Uh, thank you, Vipul Janiji and all the organizers uh, for hosting this session. And together, uh, we'll continue to strengthen the great relation between the both countries in the future as well. Thank you so much. And thank you, Amar Jot. Uh, and thank you for such thoughtful commentary about the potential of the wider relationship. Now that we've had three of you start with some comments, I thought it might be appropriate for me to circle back and ask a couple of questions. Uh, and then uh, once I've had a chance to talk to Bob Soroya, Devinder Shori, and Amargo Sandhu, uh, I will uh, move along to welcome uh, three new guests, including Prasad Banda, Deepak Anand, and Azad Koshik. So thank you. Thank you for that intervention. Bob, let me come to you um, with this question, because it seems that in Amarjot we heard the potential of somebody who is a recent comer to Canada uh, with the contemporary issues ranging from climate change to collaboration on global health security, international security. Uh, and with you, we heard about the experience of coming from India and uh, being questioned about your own turban. What, what has changed in the last 15, 20 years for Indo-Canadians in public life from your view? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Shivloy. Um, it's a wonderful question. It's a good question. When I uh, when we came to when I came to this part of the world, we were new. People haven't seen the brown feet, brown faces. Uh, they haven't seen the turban. It's not they were rude to you. They have no clue. Simple question was: You were born with the thing. Uh, how do you put the towel on? Um, uh, do you sleep with it? Um, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, there was also in back in '75, the word came "packy," that kind of thing. But but the most of the people, the best people, the good people, they always treated us with with dignity and respect. For economically, when I arrived here in in Toronto, if anybody know Toronto, Toronto ended at York Mills Road. There was all nothing but nothing nothing existed this way. 
the the Indian community, the immigrant community has done a wonderful job working in this country from bottom to all the way up. The Canada has done very well. So has the immigrant community. Look at our community. In the short 30 years, 40 years, we are, where we are, we learn from the basic. We worked uh, in the factories with the minimum wages. In my case, below minimum wages. There was no minimum wages when I came here in this country. So I got paid two bucks an hour. And I work I, 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 from my place. Uh, I have a lot of hair. I, I got up three o'clock in the morning. And first of all, there was no showers in those days. You take a bath, paper, paper, the towel dry your hair, put your turban on, walk half an hour for the night bus. From night bus to the paper subway station, you wait half an hour there. Point I was making, it take me three hours to get to a point in Markham. I lived in downtown Toronto. We have done fantastic. Our community has done fantastic. Uh, our community works hard. They they work hard. They produce. They promote. And uh, and where we are uh, again, I came to the country. Uh, I lived all my adult life in this country, and uh, the family has done very well. And I'm proud of Indian diaspora, uh, who have a good background. Uh, and uh, and we. As I said, we, we, we are the lawyers, doctors, the businessmen, politicians, you name it. We are in every single field. We are, we are in the government. We are in the private sector. Uh, this is a winning combination for us in Canada being, being in here, in my experience, the last 45, 46 years. I think it's a really important comment, Bob, because you're describing a country in which the Indo-Canadian community can actually be quite successful and has been because of the pioneering work of uh, people, frankly, like yourself, Devinder Shori, Deepak Obrai, who were the first to uh, pioneer new ground and to embrace the pluralism of our beautiful country. Uh, but we, Devinderji, come from a country that has very complex histories. And when we think about Punjab especially, because so many of our Indo-Canadian community come from that particular state in India, um, there are some horrific experiences in the 80s that continue to manifest in the psychology of the community across faiths, whether it's Sikh, Hindu, uh, and beyond. And so, Devinder, I know you, you had a, you've had a very personal story when it comes to the violence of the 80s, and it sets a context for you in how you contribute to our national debate. Could you share with us a little bit about what your story was in Punjab before you had come? And... Um, you know, what, what your message is for those misguided voices, the small number of misguided voices that, that could appeal to them to come back to, to a sense of uh, progress that India has in fact made since. Before uh, Devindraji, sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt uh, Devindraji, before you reply, um, I would just like to say one thing. Let's, uh, um, you know, focus a bit more on, uh, on the path forward. I mean, um, you know, where we can uh, take the relationship forward in a positive, constructive way. Uh, because the more we touch base upon the past, you know, the more uh, wounds it will open and it will do everybody, nobody any good. So it's, it's time uh, to have a constructive dialogue to look forward, uh, to look to the future. So with that, I mean, um, let's, let's uh, discuss on that. Well, thank you, Vipulji. I was actually uh, about to follow your instructions before getting them. I, I will finish last in one line. I don't know how many people, how many Indo-Canadians uh, have the experience of picking up dead bodies from both sides, from the people who were killed in parks and from buses, and also who were picked up from homes uh, uh, in the later part and killed as terrorists. So I have done both we, we, we were born in Punjab and uh, obviously I was born in a Hindu family, but I never realized, I never had any problem of Hindu Sikh uh, in back home. I still don't think a vast majority coming, uh, coming back to Canada. And uh, as Bob uh, said that I will also finish with one line that in 91, 92, when we were in Surrey, we had faced uh, 
face the dilemma that uh, our because our father was also a a, a, a turban wearing uh, uh, man so we had faced uh, uh, three or four times that uh, eggs were thrown on him while he was walking on the street so that's the canadian but at the same time but at the same time it's a great country and it's a great opportunity for us being indo canadians to move forward as you said uh, forget about the past and somehow work on the issue which can promote the positive relation with our home country i mean born country where we were born and our chosen country where we love to live and enjoy our life i mean it's a great country there is no issue about it i haven't felt any racism to be honest with you i have felt racism from within community we have to we uh, and we have to call the spade a spade vipul ji we yes we can we don't need to dig on our past but we do, we have to remember that we have to remember what is the what is the loss we have incurred and what could be the loss if we keep, if we if we do just ignore that portion of of our own society who basically who basically damage our 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 any effort to promote relation between india and pakistan i'm sorry india and uh, canada so yeah actually so i know i agree with you the only point i am trying to make is uh, india is made up of 29 states um, you know sometimes people forget um, there are 29 states in india and there are 10 provinces in canada so canada india relations uh, is very vast uh, there could be several province to province relations um, you know as well so let's focus on that how we can bring individual provinces together how we can bring the two countries overall together rather than uh, you know being uh, focused on one particular issue or one particular state um, and uh, contribute to the overall growth of everybody i mean if the bilateral relations overall improves then each individual province within those two countries will also benefit we probably i will differ a little bit on this we cannot ignore the issue which is damaging which is which is i mean how can you first of all i'll go back to province to province obviously province to, province to state there are very limitations as i said that uh, i i have noticed that during my uh, uh, work, work in uh, on parliamentary committee so at the end of the day is the image is the image and we should obviously we should not 100% focus on that we should focus on a vast majority of major, uh, uh, moderate to canadians we should get them together somehow on one platform or multiple positive platform and they should be vocal the problem i have yeah. seen we majority of us i mean we do all these webinars we do small meetings we talk to each other we create whatsapp groups and multiple groups and we talk and repeat the same things we need to show the face of those positive people right thank that's you that's what now. this effort is you know yeah that's what exactly this session is about and that's what uh, the conference is that i host it is to show a different you know more positive more constructive side of it uh, of this engagement and uh, to discuss i mean what initiatives uh, we are taking right now or we can take in the future uh, for the mutual benefit so i guess uh, shubhala i believe uh, deepak anand maybe prasad panda some other people have also joined if you want to bring them in i'd be happy to and thank you for that incredibly important discussion people and devinder i think that's uh, a real comment about how difficult it is as indo canadians to be able to navigate some of these defining issues of our age um just before i move on to the other three i owe amar jot a quick question um and i think if that's okay i'd like to ask him a very quick one um you heard from these two gentlemen who are who are uh, both our senior and uh they are speaking of a complex relationship between the past and the history but you personally represent the future in so many wonderful ways um when you are in brampton where you think of how much that city alone has changed since the days that bob and devinder had arrived in canada to what it is now um and you are in your communities and you're engaging your communities what do you think is the greatest source of strength for the canada india relationship 
Thank you so much. I think it's a great question. You know, as Bob Pari and Devinder Pari was uh, saying, I think we consider ourselves very lucky. We are very fortunate that we came in 2000, 2008. Uh, when they came back in 70s, 80s, they have to face you know, struggle. They have to go through a lot of struggle, uh, face racism, as Bob Pari uh, was mentioning. Uh, so they are the real heroes because they are the one uh, who represent our community that time. Because uh, we are very lucky that we came in 2008 and mostly our community was recognized. A lot of our people. Uh, now, our, back in that days, our community, I think, was not very involved in politics. Uh, the good thing is we have now Indo-Canadian MPs, MPPs. So people know that who Indo-Canadians are. Uh, we uh, belong to an Indian a country and we came to Canada for a better future. And I think it's a great opportunity for us uh, that we have uh, MPs uh, from Indo-Canadian community, MPPs. Uh, I think we can take this relation uh, of, uh, for India and Canada to a next level now because we have a lot of involvement and uh, Deepak Pari is also here. We have a, a Ministry of Economic Development, as I mentioned, uh, because Premier is very adamant that we need to have a strong relation with India. Uh, that's why our two ministers, uh, Minister Vic Fadali and Minister uh, Todd Smith, went to India. And they have also pointed, because Deepak, uh, Deepak Pari, he, he has a lot of information. Uh, he belongs to Indo-Canadian community. Uh, so he has been appointed as a special advisor to Minister Fadali. Um, Nina Tangri, uh, uh, she is the parliamentary assistant. Uh, so we have two strong guys, uh, you know, that can guide the premier, that can uh, uh, guide the minister. How can we take this relation to a next level? So I think this is this is a good opportunity for us. Um, as we, as I mentioned, that we have a lot of MPs, MPPs, uh, councillors, uh, so we can take this relation uh, to a next level. That's wonderful, and I think that couldn't be a better bridge, Amarjo. Thank you for that too. Uh, a few new guests that have joined us. Uh, I think it's really exciting that we have the Honorable Prasad Banda, Minister of Infrastructure for the Government of Alberta, here. Um, as well as he's joined by Azad Koshik and Deepak Anand. I will turn to you each for five okay. minutes of comments um, and then have a, a cycle of converse, conversational questions. So uh, Minister Banda Prasad, my friend, it's so nice to welcome you. Please take the floor for a few minutes and share your reflections and thoughts of what it means to be an Indo-Canadian in Canadian national life. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I just uh, I, I finished my other meeting, 11 to 11.30, just joined. I don't know what I missed, but at least, uh, people, G, I should thank you for something. At least you can connect me, my constituent, virtually today. The guy is, I don't know whether he's in India or Middle East. Shu is actually my <laughs> constituent. He's in my riding. Good to see you. <laughs> Uh, and I see, uh, I see a lot of known faces here. Uh, Sachikalji, thank you, Namaste, and good to see all of you. Um, I see a lot of our uh, senior colleagues, former colleagues. Uh, thanks for everything you did in your uh, in your in your life in politics. I think I, I guess the topic today is uh, what's the role of uh, uh, elected uh, Indo-Canadian officials. Um, uh, to improve, to to uh, you know deepen and strengthen the uh, relations, both cultural and economic. I guess um, what can we do? Because we are lucky to immigrate to a country where uh, we could uh, contribute in all professions, in all sectors. Um, I I see Indo Canadians contributing across Canada. In every sector, they're uh, they're shining. They're contributing, particularly in, during the pandemic. A uh, lot of healthcare professionals, whether they, those are uh, South Asian doctors or pharmacists, even all the essential workers, whether they are truck drivers or or cab drivers, they're all keeping plane services going. So, and also all our place of faith uh, like the gurdwaras supplying food and uh, uh, personal uh, protective equipment and all that and uh, and uh, showing i mean giving hand for the people that need so that's our culture so we should be proud of it and uh, mainstream canadians majority silent majority of them gave the opportunity to serve public in a dignified way I think we should uh, keep those Indian values of uh, seva, selfless seva, 
we shouldn't bring our baggage and our own personal agendas here and we have tremendous opportunity uh, particularly for uh, my young colleague uh, amarjot i happened to meet him uh, um, two years ago when i was the opposition mla uh, very bright guy with a lot of uh, uh, you know opportunity for his future the reason i moved to here i know um, you know bob and devinder ji and uh, deepak kobra and all these guys they they pal <coughs> sorry can you hear me yes yes yeah okay they all those guys that uh, started before me they paved the way for us and they went through all those uh, difficulties and today we are able to represent uh, you know um Canadians in uh, various legislatures so that's a honor it's a privilege and uh, it comes with the responsibility so we had to uh, we 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 had to keep the pride of indo canadians uh, um, um you know to to you know uh, like the guys who started this before us we had to make it easy for people coming after us by work, with our work ethic with uh, honesty and integrity so my job as uh, as an indo canadian elected official I, actually i should say something maybe i'm unique in this room because probably i'm the only guy who was born outside of punjab <laughs> born in india though but <laughs> i was born in india india is complex people in only know india but i know the true bharat because i was born there raised there spent 16 years in mumbai the small little town of india uh, before immigrating to canada so so i i, I worked with all types of indians so i know bharat i can say that one thing unique um, because by domicile i am a maharashtrian i was born south indian but uh, by profession i am a gujarati so um, half my family with bengali names <laughs> it's, uh, it's so, so I, i i can say i know true bharat and most of uh, this biharis and up people they think prasad is my last name so they think i am one of them so i can say honestly i know my Indi- my bharat is very complex for mainstream canadians they don't understand because most of you guys come from punjab and people think punjab is india but there is punjab there is india including punjab which i'm very proud of all my punjabi colleagues i worked with um, i paid a great tribute a couple of years ago when i was opposition mla the 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 uh, the um, the contributions that community made to uh, defend india during tough times and uh, it, you know uh, it, i mean they they worked as pre- i mean they had opportunity to represent india as president of india prime minister of india chief justice um in all sectors and most importantly as captains of indian cricket team that's the biggest honor anybody can have so so yeah, even i'm very thankful for all the work they did and i i have very good relations with all communities but the point i'm trying to make here is we have the greatest honor to represent um Can- canadians to connect with them build the bridges with india because india has a huge um human capital whereas canada has largest natural resources and uh, we can bridge the gap india we canada can fuel and also you know feed india with our um energy products with our uh, agricultural forestry products and india has always uh, stepped up when the world is in crisis during uh, uh, y2k crisis in 2000 i was in bombay and india was sending lot of it professionals to fix that y2k bug that, i mean uh, tens of thousands of them went to us mainly and they went all over the world and they're doing the same thing now during pandemic they're providing vaccines life saving vaccines including to canada so 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 we so we have to be mindful of the sensitive relationships we, our job as elected officials is uh, if, if nothing else at least let's not harm the relations let's let's not hurt them 
but i see there are a lot of opportunity particularly for alberta because um, prime minister modi and uh, prime minister harper they all said uh, uh, canada is an energy superpower so we have an opportunity to supply our uh, products in fact yesterday me and our uh, um, our uh, economy minister um, met virtually with a small group uh, of uh, people manpreet singh he actually is the president of uh, indian chamber of uh, international business they they represent small medium uh, companies in india we talked about opportunities how to uh, bring them on board and uh, you know help them to establish their businesses in canada and the same way we asked them if uh, canadians want to export to india how they can help so like that even during opposition i reached out to industrialists and politicians of all stripes in fact i had uh, an opportunity to introduce premier kenny to captain amrinder singh and my good friend manpreet badal and i visited the uh, mrs uh, badal when she was the uh, agriculture uh, the co- minister of food processing and cold storage discussed a lot of opportunities so it's not only with uh, you know uh, with the uh, state of punjab but we are also looking at opportunities across uh, india because they, there are there are 28 provinces in india almost 6 or 7 union territories so it's very complex the country is very complex unless you know it was easy for me when i was in opposition to you know to say anything i want to say but now after i became uh, minister of crown i am actually experiencing the burden of leadership anything we do to protect lives and livelihoods there is always a balance our premier you know I, god bless him nobody wants his job anymore and <laughs> it's it's very complex to keep uh, um albertans and canadians happy these days so every government they whatever policy decisions they take i i sincerely believe whether it is canadian government or indian government they make those decisions for the greater good and prosperity of all their people so our job as elected officials is uh, to actually leave this country better than what uh, they gave us for our future generations otherwise you know we are disproportionately representing uh, canadians right now in all levels of legislature we lose that privilege if we don't work in uh, uh, you know the, the reason i'm saying in alberta alone in my own caucus we have five people with uh, indian connection and then in opposition we have two so out of 87 we had the honor of having seven people with ties to india in which other country you have that privilege i'm told in parliament of canada we have 20 indian uh, origin uh, members of parliament about 20 i'm not sure but but that's a that that's a honor but then we we also have the responsibility to unite people as elected officials our job is to unite people not divide people so um so i strive hard every day to um to uh, improve those relations between the countries even within the provinces uh, it so it's not easy but it's not difficult for us to keep that honor canadians gave us so let's uh, prove them the with our work ethic and also the indian values of peace love kindness forgiveness mm-hmm. now let's look forward we all came for a better future for our children that that's why i came you know i i thought my my son will have a better uh, uh, future in canada and uh, my job is to create prosperity for for uh, for albertans i am elected to represent albertans a strong alberta in canada will be a good thing for everybody because uh, you know most of the companies uh, that does business with uh, albert of our from ontario and uh, quebec when i was in island gas so uh, so so you, you guys we, we we are going through challenging times we need the uh, rest of canada to you know give us a hand when we need so uh, we will we'll, we'll return the favor once we are back up on our uh, 
feet again and uh, strong alberta will always contribute to the rest of canada but i want to thank all of you for everything you do to make canada better but let us uh, let us uh, um, not ignore the importance of india because it's the fastest growing economy um and uh, <laughs> and also the largest democracy in the world so we as uh, elected officials in canada let's make relations better with our motherland and uh, of course although our job is to represent uh, every voice you know my job is to defend everybody's right because canada guarantees freedom of speech freedom of assembly but we have to use it in a way it's respectful it's peaceful it's uh, you know it unites people not divide people that that should be our job anyway i stopped it there thank you thank you for the opportunity to join absolutely uh, sorry shorma i need to come in for just one minute uh, bob has just message he has to go to another meeting uh, mp bob sir yeah. so before uh, we let him go uh, i would just like to ask him a one a short quick question uh, just building a bit on what uh, mr panda was just saying um you know with uh, with the numbers of indo canadian population growing in canada with that especially in the last uh, election i would say last two elections we see a lot of vote bank appeasement politics uh, a lot of ghettoization that we have typically seen happen in indian politics in india so it is now repeating in canada you know so is it really helping or hurting more you know both for the bilateral relations um, as well as for canada itself uh, people you thank you so much for your it's a good question it is uh, uh it's all depend which you you see it um, uh the um, in in some cases uh, in certain part of the country in brampton surrey or the different it could be the same thing in uh, calgary and, and the other part of those things those are the issues those are the minor issues in my mind what we can do as a canadian working with um what they call it the, the good trade is have the two, two sides are winning what we need to what we need to focus on it how can we as uh, prasad said we came for one 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 reason one reason only to for our future of our families for the kids as he said he, he came for the better for the future we can do better for the future if the country is doing good country is doing very well at the moment country can do 10 times better this country like india for the, in, in in this situation the only way they can do better if they can trade more for so this year i can tell you with a ton of crude oil and his his, his ships are loaded to send down to india or 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 or, or, or the in can canadian uh, uh canadian uh, investment in india cpp canada pension plan have tens and of, tens of billions of dollars spent in india or invested in india is the right word they are getting 10 to 12% return on it uh india is supplying tons of students the look the students uh, uh, amjot is here uh, sandu uh, is <laughs> the pride situation came as a student now he is a, a mla or mpp uh, here so it is the win win situation what we need to focus we need to focus on it india canada business deals we we have a, we, we, this country is a supermarket of energy india is starving for energy uh, or or vice versa india is providing a million uh, vaccines to india when our prime minister uh, i don't know whatever the word you want to use it i don't want to say anything negatively um, on it india came for help modi ji modi ji Uh, tweeted he is here for canada so what we should be doing uh, either uh, the trade the business the 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 the, the two democracies they, they both have a speech freedom of speech freedom of religion freedom of expression we can work hand in hand to the betterment of this country uh, and uh, they both both countries want to work at our job as a politicians we want to make sure we help that cause for 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 both of these countries more of our beloved countries uh, to make sure the canada is doing well india is doing well uh, 
But if there is anything I could be any help at any given time, I'll, I'm always here for you or anybody else. Yeah, but like my original question was, no, when we vote now in a provincial election or in a federal election, it feels as if I'm voting for a Gujarat election or for a Punjab election or for a UP election. So where is it taking us? Look, uh, <clears throat> this is... Um the part of democracy. This is uh, sometimes our people are uh, um, blinded with the wrong information. They're, sometimes they're uh, misguided with the, especially today's internet, Facebook, tweet, um, stuff doesn't work. Uh, when I was growing up back in Punjab, we had um, uh, some of our the laborers, I still keep in touch with them. For, I give you for, for one example. He called me the other day, he said, Paji, I don't know if you understand. They said, brother, why did you buy your Lal Kila? I said, who bought the Lal Kila? He said, a Canadian guy bought the Lal Kila. So I said, where did you see the thing? He said, Saradan Funte on the Saradan Funte on the. So those illiterate people or misguided people are Jews, either in. Uh, 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 Mr. Sandhu's writing or in Calgary, uh, but I am lucky in this kind. In my case, I have a 68% Chinese descent people and uh, um, it make my life much easier. But I hear those stories. It, it says, uh, the only solution is if somebody can come back with the common sense thing, we can take the fake news out. We all would be better, better country, better people. Bob, you. I'm with you. I, I'm in the same situation. I have 70% uh, uh, mainstream uh, Caucasians, 20% actually Chinese. Lucky you. 70, 75% <laughs> white people. <laughs> You're lucky. <laughs> people, people, before uh, Mr. Soroya go, can I uh, have a quick word? Sure. Go ahead. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, friends. I mean, Mr. Panda, Mr. Saroya, they are very polished politicians, active, and uh, obviously one of the reasons I refused to run uh, uh, and go active in politics was I, I simply didn't like the whip on everything. So I'll be very honest. Mm -hmm. But now com coming back to you asked a very specific question, but you got dodged. You know that. <laughs> you know that. And <laughs> Why am I not surprised? So hold on. Same, same, thing, same thing with Mr. Panda. He made a big story. <laughs> my brother. But he, he twice only he talked about responsibility. That we as public figures have responsibility as well. Nobody wants to touch. As long as we we keep on living in silos in Canada, as long mm -hmm. as Canada does not come up with some sort of um, inter integration mechanism, believe me. And as long as Canada does not send a message, and no matter who, who is in government, as long as Canada does not send a message, clear message to India that we have no place and we do not encourage division or split in India and we have no place for those people and they have to say it openly because it's a number game, because it's a, I know 34 seats federally are like that, which can be impacted with one statement of the leader. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm watching, I'm watching sitting MPs make all kinds of statements. I don't know. I, I, you may not invite me in this kind of webinar in future, may I be But the reality mm -hmm. is that we have to stand up. We have to stand up. <laughs> reality is, the reality is in federal and provincial, 97% active politicians are Punjabis. We cannot avoid, we cannot avoid our, our population. So I will leave it there. I'm, I'm a little frustrated from my parliamentary experience and my public life experience, my own community experience, because I have seen all this division on caste, creed and uh, uh, religion basis. We need to bring that also in our, our, our discussion and we need to work really hard for our future generations. The, can, 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 I'll take the, I can take 10 seconds here. Sure. If it's okay, the, yes. the, the, um, uh, the um, Shoriji is not wrong, but the same token, time to time to time, what happened is uh, sometimes 
we come with a different uh, a different um, policies or wrong policy that one policy doesn't fit the glove or one person uh, one policy the policy doesn't fit in 2011 on the federal side most of the immigrants elected conservatives all around the all around the thing there were some issues with the policies this is why the people went to the other side and but today's issue is the negative media uh, the negative media is flying on the on the on the on the social media right Th- that is the biggest thing if we can control the social media we can control control the whole thing and uh, shori ji we can talk off the record anytime you you're willing or you're in town we can sit talk chat have a drink drink with, with the with the with, with the coffee cup <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, so 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 uh, people did good thing good stuff i'm i'm glad shubhji thank you so much uh, and people and everybody good to see you Namaste. stay sasrikal and other words sare anu and i'm always thoda shura par any time available or phone call away i i just uh, wanted to echo the sentiments of davinder shori ji and and, uh, and and i really do i'm a professor i'm not a politician so i have to be very critical and, and uh, straight away say the things what is there on social media is not all negative that reflects the pulse of a society we can't ignore it that's one thing secondly the recent events that have happened in canada there's a lot of depth in the indo canadian community canada india relations are very very easy to develop we have 1.4 1.5 million people and we all have very good relationship with india as individuals as people and so on if it is left to people to people kind of things things would work better now in the current situation what happened when well we talk about divisions in india and so on but we are creating divisions here within canada it is very common for our politicians to use the word tamil uh, canadians bengali canadians gujarati canadians a divisive politics is being played out in our system that does not help canada it does not help canada india relations and that's what we need to look into very carefully just last point not a single indo canadian leader whether from federal government or the provincial government condemned the kind of hate crimes that have been happening in canada lately our indo canadian leadership is not connected with our community and and i i do see that as a major flaw that is why we can't advance canada indian relations thank you So thank you that was entirely out of order but a welcome comment to hear nevertheless <laughs> so thank you <laughs> for that intervention uh for those who have uh to be introduced to Azad Koshik he is a passionate individual he is the president the chairman of the National Alliance of Indo-Canadians he's a very prominent Indo-Canadian welcome and thank you for that intervention very much uh, Vipul ji if you're okay I'd love to turn to a couple of new elected officials that have joined us uh and yeah, and give them find them an opportunity to to share a few comments about their experience in uh in in elected life and in um and their responsibilities as Indo-Canadian legislators uh Deepak Anand uh is obviously we're going from Prasad Pandas from from an engineer to an MBA we're going from Alberta to Ontario <laughs> we're going from infrastructure to economy so i think it might be appropriate Deepak Anand to let you start for a few minutes and just before you do that Nina Tangri thank you for thank you for being here thank you for being elected in Mississauga we're a huge fan of yours and i think you win the best backdrop of the uh webinar award so far so uh, i'll come back to you in a minute nina but for now deepak anand over to you my friend thank you shiva thank you so much i mean again <clears throat> uh, uh good to see good to see the uh, familiar faces good to see my brother prasad panda we talk on uh, time to time and if if he is okay and willing i'll be happy to adopt you as my resident if he has any issue with that um you know but again more than that i think i think uh, i i would say uh, talking about uh, the topic itself i want to commend this guy here his name is vipul jani i don't know where he gets this energy that he keeps going on and on going on and it, i i will talk a little spiritualistic out here i do remember uh, when we were growing up my dadi was used to tell me story and one of them was there was a king and they said it is such a tough job you got so many things going on around how do you manage your work he said that's easy 
He gave a pitcher full of oil and asked that person, I said, from my place to the market, you have to drop this oil. All you have to make sure, not even a one drop fell out of the pitcher. He walked about five, six kilometers, dropped it, did a wonderful job. Not even a single drop of oil came out of the pitcher. And then King asked him a very simple question. What did you see on the way? He said, what do you mean? What did I see on the way? I was so focused on my pitcher to make sure that none of the oil should come out of it. Since I was focused on my work, all I saw was my work. And I want to commend Vipul for doing this work. You know, Thank you. Uh, promoting India, Canada relationship, irrespective of the noise around us. Devinder Ji, you talked very much and I align with you as a politician, we are the voice of the people, but many times we forget this, that the voice of the people is the people we represent. So yes, sometimes we have a people who has a voice and may not be it's exactly your voice, but that is their voice. So yes, sometimes we do have to represent their voice too. So that's the second thing. Third thing, listen, doesn't matter, you know, what we say, at the end of the day, it is the world is built on one simple principle, and that is survival for the fittest. I was just, as you were talking, I went on internet and I wanted to check the GDP growth in Indian states. I don't know if any of you have looked at it. Number one is Mizoram. Number two is Tripura. Number three is Gujarat. By the way, Punjab is 25th. Wow. It's the choice of the people. Who said power is with the politician? None of the time the power is with the politician. The power is with the people. At the end of the day, people wants to do that, whatever they want to pick and choose. If Gujaratis want to pick and choose to be at number five, in the among top five, they choose business. Punjabis want to choose politics. They want to choose religion. They want to choose other things. The result is they're 25th. So I think it is about the choice also. So I think what I would suggest, many times we keep saying that India is not Punjab, India is not Gujarat, India is not even uh, Andhra Pradesh or Tangana. India is one country with 29 states. It's huge. So we need to look as Canadian politician is to what is our job. What is my job? My job here is very simple. To make sure when I started my journey in Mississauga Malton, what was the growth rate? What were the opportunities? What were the gaps? What was lacking in terms of resources? My job is to first prioritize that. Make sure I get most for my people who elected me and made me the MPP. Gave me the job which I'm enjoying today. The second is my province my government, my premier. So I look at it this way. I look at it in a way when I talked about, when I put a picture on my head, I want to make sure that oil which is there, I don't look around the noise. I look at the, my job. I want to make sure when I walk, none of the drop of the oil drops down. I want to look at it in a way, if Gujarat is the, country, is the province who wants to work with us, or if it is uh, Telangana who wants to work with us, where we can bring the foreign direct investment, we can grow the pie for Mississauga Mountain, we can have more businesses investing in Mississauga Mountain. Why would I even know, need to go to India? I would go to Gujarat. Why would I need to go to whole uh, Punjab, uh, uh, Haryana or Himachal or anywhere else? I will go wherever they will welcome me, wherever they'll say, okay, come, we'll give you the help that you need to, to succeed in your job in Canada. Simple. And I think what we need to do, in my opinion, we need to have separate. Davindarji, what you talked about, building that relationship, uh, reviving the relationship between different religions, reviving the relationship between different cultures, that's a separate conversation. And we should have that conversation. But then we should not talk about economy. We should not talk about anything else. I believe one of the problems we all have is we mix everything. 
And I think instead of mixing everything, we focus on one thing. And today I think our focus is simple, how we can build a relationship, in my opinion, I don't know if you will correct me if I'm wrong. Today's uh, focus is how we can build the, mend the relationship with India and Canada and enjoy the benefit of progress at both the places. And I'll shut out here. And I still want to say thank you. You know, you're doing an incredible job. Gujarati guy is actually having a conversation with the Piara Punjab. What was the name of that project you are dealing with? Piara Punjab. Piara Punjab. Piara Punjab. Look at it. He's the one who's leading. I never consider myself as a Gujarati or this, that. I consider myself as an Indo-Canadian. And uh, if I can promote any province in Canada or India, I will do it with pleasure. You know, so yeah, so the topic, as you were saying, the underlying tone of this uh, session is that there's a lot of negative influence right now at play. You know, um, there's a lot of effort to derail this bilateral uh, relationship, which uh, people like you, Deepakji, uh, Prasadji, Ninaji, you know, a lot of... Uh, uh, politicians uh, have been trying to build for a long time. Uh, there is a sincere effort to derail this uh, relationship. So uh, how do we stay focused on the positive agenda, you know, that will help not harm the relationship? That is the effort. So, yeah, I guess we can hear from Ninaji also. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Vipulji, for inviting me to join you all today. And it is really nice to see some uh, friends I haven't seen for a long time, and of course my colleagues from the legislature. Um, but sorry, I did. I was in another meeting, so I was just uh, wrapped up that one, and uh, got another one in about 15 minutes, unfortunately. So I only have a short amount of time. But I think it's a very critical issue that you're discussing today. Um, you know, someone. I was not born in India like many of you, and then came to Canada. I was actually born in the UK. My parents left India in the 50s, so they brought the culture of the India to England at that time, which is what I was brought up on. And when I came to Canada in 1984, um, in a community with a lot more Indo-Canadians than where I was used to growing up with, I grew up in a very um, predominantly Caucasian society with a few mixed uh, other ethnic minorities, but you know, being ethnic was never an issue. Um, however, when I came to Canada, living amongst a lot more Indo-Canadians, uh, certainly with a lot more from different parts of India, being a Punjabi, right? You just, you, you know, your culture somewhat, but learning so much from so many other people was so critical. And, you know, I enjoy very much going back to India um, at the very least once a year. I mean, it was exactly a year ago today that I came back from India. And um, that previous 12 months, I was there three times. So once was for the trade mission uh, that I went with Minister Fideli and we were in Chandigarh, we were in Delhi and Mumbai and we, had, we, we built some great relationships and I think that's what's really important for all of us. We need to understand that uh, the relationship that Canada and India has is a very good one. We have great bilateral arrangements, we're still working on the free trade agreement. I would really like to see that come to fruition soon. Um, but we also understand that culturally we have so much in common that we, you know, we don't always have to agree. We don't agree on everything and we never will. And that's okay. It's, it's fine to have disagreements about, you know, whether you're a better Punjabi than me or whether you're a better Indian than I am, or it, it, it doesn't matter. We can agree to disagree. Um, but, you know, the what's been happening of late it's been very concerning. Like we all absolutely agree that anyone has a right to protest and peacefully. There's nothing wrong with that. And the issues that have come about, I, I'm far from being qualified uh, to make a comment on who's right, who's wrong, which is the best way they should have done it. Did they do it right? It was a government uh, making the wrong decision. That That's absolutely not my position to make a comment on that because I'm quite frankly, I don't know the issues uh, in detail. In Canada, in Saskatchewan, for example, um, we had a very long-standing relationship uh, with India and selling pulses, or so your dals, your chole, you know, the dry beans that we've been sending to India for a long time. 
And the current prime minister in India, he added significant tariffs on those because he wanted Indian farmers to grow that. So that we had, I think it was made in India, the, the, what he has over there. So, you know, our products and our, our farmers here were having a very difficult time selling their products there because they became so expensive. Um, but that's something that's domestic in India. And absolutely, the prime minister has a right to do that. But it hurts the Canadian farmers. Now, I know some of the changes that they were, were looking at. And, you know, there's always room for reform on any policy here in Canada, India, globally. What, ha what was good 100 years ago is not necessarily what's best today. And, um, you know, I think it's what's critical is that we need to understand that we have to continue building the relationship. Uh, I don't want to see uh, our prime minister and the Indian prime minister significantly disagree on things because it hurts the relationship as a whole. Um, you know, I was listening to uh, Captain Amrinder Singh a few days ago, and he says because of what's happening with the farmers' protest that people are not willing to invest in Punjab. And it's really hurting them that way. And Udipak touched on, you know, how Gujarat does such a good job in, in attracting investment. But Punjab has not been able to do the same. Well, you know, sometimes it's what people see globally and what the media portrays Punjab as, which hurt, makes that hurt. Um, <clears throat> but my responsibility, I'm parliamentary assistant to economic development, job creation and trade. So as we did uh, Vipul G in the, in the Invest Punjab, Invest Ontario um, convention, that the conference that you did a couple of weeks ago, and plus the trade missions that we've been doing ongoing, whether they're virtual or in person, you know, we're trying to build those relationships and we're trying to ensure that both Canada, Ontario, and whether it's a state or India as a whole, that we can build those relationships and we want to make sure that we're comfortable with that relationship. And I don't want to see that go astray because of what we're seeing in the media today. Now, I don't follow the Indian news uh, intimately. I, I watch it on and off. Um, what I see through many social media sites is it's disturbing. It really is disturbing. And, you know, and you don't know what is real and what's fake. So yeah. that, that's what really concerns me a lot. Uh, and I'm not saying the Indian news has been bought by either side. And I'm not saying the Canadian news has been bought by either side. But you know, if some of the things we're seeing on social media are true, that's concerning. If they're fake, that's even more concerning. So the information that we're receiving in this world of digital social media is uh, it's, it, it can cause significant um, problems for everyone that's involved. So, you know, I'm hoping and I'm, I'm confident, I think I would like to say that, that the government and the farmers will come to some resolution. They have to. They must, and they must do it sooner rather than later. Um, I, I'm not, you know, I'm certainly not going to give my suggestions on what they should or shouldn't do, but I really need them and I really want them to come together and, and find a resolution that they can all work with and maybe have a, long a longer term resolution, maybe not something that's going to happen today, but over time um, that doesn't hurt, you know, uh, you know, let's understand that many of the very small farmers may have heard from the new proposals. And on the other side, reforms are necessary. So I really like to see resolutions. Now, that's one part of Canada-India relations, right? But there's so much more. There's so much that we can do. We do very little trade with India as a whole, very little. And uh, I think, and you know, you may have heard Minister Fideli say it, it's just a blank canvas. There's so much opportunity between the two countries. That's my role, and that's what I'm, I'm really excited to see. Part of what I do also is in the life, is the life science strategy I'm putting together for the province. Uh, it's almost prepared. India has played a critical, vital role right now with the COVID vaccine. And, you know, and it, it's going to be one of the go-to places for a lot of the world for, for the excess vaccines that we need. So let's understand that there's so much that globally we can all do together and if there's, if there's one thing that COVID has shown us, that we have to work together. Every province, every level of government, and globally, we have to all collectively work together to make sure that we can try and get everybody who wants a vaccine vaccinated. And it, it's challenging. I know that. And I know I've rambled on for a very long time. So I'll pass it back. And, you know, uh, I hope we can continue this conversation. Yes, very, very well said, uh, Nina Ji. So uh, before I give it back to Shubhadai, um, as I said earlier, uh, I will repeat myself again. 
um, India has 29 states. Canada has 10 provinces. So it's high time, you know, that the political leaders also um, start looking at it that way, that it's uh, 29 states and 10 states that you have to work with um, and uh, expand their horizon also a little bit. Um, Deepak ji, as you were saying earlier, the king and the oil and everything, um, I would request Prasad Pandaji to send me some oil so I don't have to buy it here. Um, and <laughs> I am putting together another major Made in India conference next month. So I will uh, continue to keep bugging all of you uh, to come and uh, speak again. So I'll get back to you again on another India related conference next month. And uh, back to you, Swala, again uh, for uh, the next uh, set of questions. We have about 15 minutes remaining, 15, 20 minutes. So a question, then anyone can come in, answer. Um, uh, Azad also not spoken much. So back uh, to you, I'll, Swala. I'll jump in if I'm allowed. I think you're allowed, Devinder, but I want to make sure we give Azad Koshik just a couple of minutes to, to, to give his perspectives. So, yeah. Devinder, you please go ahead and make your question yeah, short. Quick, quickly, I mean, uh, I have to say this, that uh, Nina Ji has said it very well. I mean, she has touched a lot of things, a lot of things and a lot of perspectives. I, 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 I agree with her. I mean, I, I definitely agree with Ramesh Ji also, who... who, who, who talked about the focus, focus on our constituents, focus on our province, focus on our departments, definitely. But at the same time, I'll finish with this one comment, which, which was uh, raised by one of, uh, one of us, uh, us uh, that it is also a responsibility of political leaders and social leaders to make sure that we do not lose the basic rights in Canada expression of say, opinion which recently has come to notice and and the politicians and social leaders must must come out strong sending the message that this is canada we need to respect each other i'll finish with that thank you devinder great comment uh, azad koshik president of the national alliance of indo canadians you have the floor for just a, just a few minutes because you took a few of them already. So <laughs> I'll look forward to your views. <laughs> it's good to see you, Shiv Loy, after that long a time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I think a lot has been covered by our leadership uh, over here. Um, and, and, you know, I, I'm not a politician. I'll just share with you some thoughts uh, uh, as a community person. Well, let me tell you, you're talking about uh, Canada-India relations here. Now, so far, what we had, if we had any kind of thing, it was kind of intergovernmental kind of thing. Uh, that kind of tussle all, always goes across the globe uh, between different governments. It was nothing new. It was just normal. What has changed and for which we all should be concerned about, especially our uh, leadership here uh, of Indo-Canadian origin. I was in India recently. And I met some new ministers, uh, some members of parliament, and some ordinary people in the street. And you know what they think and at this time? I do want to know, the moment you say that you are from Canada, they say Khalistani. That is how the message has gone to India. The people-to-people -people relationship has been damaged. And we are talking about canada India relationship. So that should tell us how much work our Indo-Canadian leadership has to do. This is one thing that I'd like to say. Secondly, I'll just tell you a story. I'm a professor at the university. We had five Sikh ministers at federal level. And in the corridor, a, a Sikh student ran into me, asked me something very casually. I made a very casual response. And I told him, you need to go in that direction. Well, I walked back to my office. He walks back. And by now I have opened the door and he has read my name. And then I said to him, look here, you were supposed to go that side. Why have you come? And he said to me, Dr. Kashi, can I have a word with you? I said, sure, come on in. And you know, he said, I have been at this university for four years. And my talking to you this morning is the best experience I have had at this university. That should tell us something. Now, I do have this email that came this morning uh, from a member of community. 
uh, and, and please, I don't belong to, I'm not talking in political terms at all. I'm talking as a community person, uh, no political leanings uh, here with this comment that has come to me today. Uh, I have been an active conversor and scrutineer for the liberals until 2014 elections. I had supported the NDP when Bob Ray was elected. That was the only exception. I used to be a strong supporter of Pierre Elliott Trudeau, even more so for Le Petit Garçon de Chavigny, but now I'm very circumspect. And that should reflect the state of affairs. Now, it is not uncommon. Actually, the indo caribbean word was coined by me uh, at one time. Uh, and the reason, there was a reasoning uh, uh, there. Our politicians here in Canada, that includes through the spectrum, they would say Tamil Canadians, Gujarati Canadians, uh, Punjabi Canadians, and so on. The divisive politics is being played here in Canada. And I know people mentioned a bit about that. And that is a very scary scenario. Secondly, uh, our leadership here, in general, take this as a, as a positive criticism. I'm trying to be helpful to you to understand what is going on in the community. Our leadership is very party-centric. This is party's point of view, and this is all that we have to follow. Yes, they should, but they should also be representing the community's point of view to the party. So both sides of the story are heard, and a logical and rational decision is made. And that is not happening. It's just one-sided story. Uh, for example, peaceful farm uh, protests in India. I mean, none of our leadership came out and said, well, yes. Uh, well, there was an assault in democracy in India. And, and as we did for Capitol Hill, none of our leadership came out and openly spoke about that. And this is our expectation from our community. What I'm trying to mention here is, once elected, if there's a disconnect with the community, that does no good to our leadership. That does no good to our community. We need to remain connected all the time. Social media is a useful thing to, to have a pulse of the community. Let's not take it as negatively all the time. Let's see right or wrong, good or bad. That's, that's what we have to logically and rationally take a fi final decision at the, at the end of the day. And, and more facts you have in front of you, you can come out with a more appropriate decision. Uh, I would mm -hmm. say that... Uh, if we really have to enhance Canada-Indian relationship, our Indo-Canadian uh, leadership must reconnect with the roots. They're just you, getting sir. disconnected with the roots. And at that point, once they reconnect, you have lots of resources in your community. Having great Canada-Indian relations is an easy task for you if we remain grounded in the reality and get connected with our community. Thank you. Thank you, Azadji. Thank you. Great comments. Much appreciated there. Um, I, I particularly took heart to the fact that in school life that it didn't matter if it was a Sadar or a Hindu, but that it was an engineer and a, and a student and they were trying to do the best they could for each other. That's a really special, a really special part of our unity. I was reflecting on Vipul's uh, refrain about the number of Indian states and the number of Canadian provinces. I have another one to contribute. Uh, India has 1.4 billion of the world's people, and together Canada and India have 1.4 billion of the world's people. So I think to give us a little bit of context to the type of teamwork that is required in the, uh, the, the objective of two countries like Canada and India working together and successfully, I'm going to start closing this conversation out uh, by turning to Deepak Anand, uh, Prasad Banda, and finally Nina, if you've got just a few more minutes to stay with us. Uh, Nina Tangri for the final word. Uh, Deepak, uh, you are uh, a singular type of leader. Uh, you and Nina represent in so many ways uh, the next generation of voices for where this relationship will go. You both do so very delicately and very, very masterfully in constituencies that are affected by very diverse populations. So Deepak, my question to you is this, what is the most important thing that can be done to orient Canadians, Indo-Canadians especially, uh, on the big picture objectives of why we need unity in Canada for a better relationship with India. Examples of uh, success, examples of success stories. Uh, 
uh, you know, when, when we talk about Redis Lab, when we talk about TCS, when we talk about Paytm, when we talk about all these uh, companies who come here, grow here, and uh, the profit goes back to India or Canadian companies going to India and contributing to the I I Indian uh, communities uh, through corporate social responsibility, not just the profit bringing it back. So those success stories where we can showcase, you know, that how when we work together, we grow together, but we give back together also. And by doing this, we can create a momentum of win, win, win. And plus, as I said earlier, we need to showcase not only the positive side and the other side, what we are losing because of this um, in terms of uh, lost opportunity. So if we bring those and the benefit you just talked about, it, Canada has a lot of resources. India has a lot of people. And when we bring these resources and the people, which itself is a resource too. And if we do not genuinely work together to bring these resources together for the benefit of our society, we're losing the opportunity. So that phrase that we need to put together. And I, 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 I apologize, I keep saying this and I will keep continuing to say this. I came from a writing when I was, the day I started my journey in the politics, and I will tell you openly, 90% of the people said, you cannot win, you will not win, you will not run far. And uh, those 90% of the people, I, I always ask them, why do you think this? I did not criticize them. And I can proudly say, not 100% of those 90%, but I can tell you 80% of those 90% were there helping me at the time of election. I could not have one without their support, but I didn't took it as a criticism. For me, I took it as a criticism. Maybe they're telling me to work harder. They Maybe they're telling me to be careful. Maybe they're telling me that you need our support and we have that experience to support you. And I took everything with it. I personally think what we need to do is, I, I think we need to, I need to rerun my nomination we need to work together. Don't look at the noises. Look at the positivity. Look at the opportunity which are lost. Tell and talk about that. And that's exactly this guy Vipul Jani is doing that. Excellent. So, thank you so much. No, excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Minister Panda, I think you're still there. Um, and so if you are, I wanted to come to you very briefly and to ask the question, um, how do you advise um, the wider community of political leaders to look at India when you think about all of the other opportunities and rivals that Canada has in the world, if you are there. And if you're not, then we will thank you for your time and for your having participated and say nothing evil about you because we like you. Um, I guess this allows us, Vipalji, as we kind of wrap this up, we have a few minutes left. I have one final question for Nina Tangri. Um, Oh, Mr. Mr. Panda's return. Sorry, Nina. Excuse me. Prasad, did you get the question? Sorry, I got distracted. Uh, we have some other meeting going on, side meeting. Um, online, though, nobody here with me. So um, so what was the question again? Uh, it, was, it was broadly, how do you help, as a, as a leader in Canada, as an elected minister, how do you help wider Canada, the wider Canadian society understand that India of the past is not India of the future. Deepak Anand was describing the success stories of Paytm and the, the revolution that's happening amongst the young people in India and the transformation happening in the country very articulately. Absolutely. How do you take that message to the, to the, wider, to the wider country? Right. So... You so, only have a few minutes. Yeah. So I probably need a couple of more minutes. But uh, so... Yeah. With, uh, with India's growing middle class, they have out of their 1.3 billion, I guess, almost 700, 800 million of them are hanging below 35 year old. They have their own aspirations, growing aspirations. So the country, uh, so they, and they also have uh, aspirational goals to, uh, to make their economy, double their economy from two and a half trillion to five trillion or something in, uh, so the, those are their goals. They're not waiting for Canada to come and, uh, uh, you know, uh, to come and partner with them in a respectful way. The comments I hear when I talk to senior levels of government in Delhi and uh, 
other provinces. They don't want any distraction at the bilateral uh, relations. Um, so they same like China, India has been. If uh, people have observed, uh, Prime Minister Modi wants successive majority governments, so he could uh, he could uh, uh, bring the country together, and uh, he has strong mandate to look after, uh, I mean, to grow India's economy and deliver uh, prosperity to his people. I I wish uh, my role as an elected official here is uh, to leverage that relationship for the benefit of Albertans, particularly, you know, in, uh, in, I mean, as you all know, Alberta last uh, five, six years, we, yeah, our economy took big beating disproportionate to other uh, provinces. So we are mindful about it. We're trying to bring our economy back on track. We're focusing on diversifying our economy. We're trying to get a lot of IT companies and other companies of Indian origin but they're looking for certainty and for, to create that investor confidence. Our job is to unite people and bring them all together because if they're going to send IT professionals to fill the um, empty towers in Calgary, they, they want to see peace and harmony. So my job is to unite people. That's what I'm going to focus. We, India is still interested in doing uh, trade promotion with at least uh, Alberta. I, I, I keep hearing, um, but Alberta is not just Canada. We have a lot of potential in Ontario, in BC, everywhere. Canada can offer um, whatever India needs. As I said before, they have growing population. We can feed them. We can fuel them. I, uh, energy poverty is something I grew up, actually, I experienced. I was lucky we had electricity when I was born for my house in the rural area, but many of our neighbors and, uh, uh, you know, relatives, they didn't have the luxury of having electricity those days. So I have seen this, uh, you know, for, uh, for bottled gas, we had to wait for five, six years. You had to book that and wait for the connection for five, six years because there was a quota system. So they, they have scarcity and we have abundance. So yes, we do. Our goals have to... Sorry? I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I agree with you. Yes, yes, they have scarcity and we have abundance and building those bridges are crucial. And you do such a, an amazing part of that, Minister. We can't thank you enough for the work that you're doing from Alberta. We are running out of time and I owe Nina one, one quick question before we, we finish. Well, what, one last thing I want to mention, Shu, is... Uh, Very briefly. For global issues, we need to find global solutions. If, uh, if uh, leaders like Trudeau are more worried about uh, world hunger and uh, world poverty and also climate change, we have to address where the problem is. In India, I know people still uh, cut, uh, you know, dry, dry stems from the plants and burn that to cook and some of them because they don't have access to clean uh, cooking fuels. So those kind of things. So if we can help them, with our natural gas or something, so they can they can actually uh, reduce their emissions. They can come out of poverty. That improves their life conditions, living conditions. So and that creates growth and prosperity for them. Create local jobs here in Canada. So so that that's what we need to focus. We have to address the problem where it is, and we have to uh, contribute to that. That's where I. Thank you. No, thank you very much, Minister. I uh, couldn't agree more. Nina, final question. You'll notice one other thing. Beyond having the best backdrop of us all, um, you are also uh, the only female amongst us. And as an Indo-Canadian woman who has succeeded in politics, I have to think, you know, many of our families, at least my family, they discourage Canadians to participate. They discourage your children's, their children from participating in elected life and public life. Um, they encourage... Uh, participating in an industry, whether it's the medicine, the law, the business, whatever sector it might be. But public life is a really difficult step to take. And I think it's even harder for Indo-Canadian women to take that. So thank you for your leadership. My question to you is this, um, what is your advice to mothers and fathers, uncles and aunties, nieces, sisters, uh, particularly in terms of what they should think of as their responsibility to Canada in addition to their responsibility to their heritage? 
Well, thank you, Siobhan, and thank you for, for moderating today. I think you've done a phenomenal job. And uh, I think what we need to understand is that elected life, I think everyone, those of us who are elected, uh, even though I've been involved in politics for over 25 years, once I was elected, it was still so much more to learn, and I'm learning every day. Um, and it's extremely challenging. There's, there's, you know, you have people who have a point of view that is, you know, let's just take the lockdowns we have here in Ontario. We have people who believe that every single thing should be locked down. They sh nobody should be leaving their homes at all. And then we have people that believe everything should be open on the other side. And then you have everybody in between. So I think understanding that everybody has a point of view and a, and a different view of things. And, and, you know, everyone has a right to their point of view. With women, we tend to first, when it comes to getting involved in politics, we need to be asked. Most women are just not. Um, they need to be told that they can do a job. They need to be told um, you'd be great as a member of provincial parliament or a member of parliament or an MLA in, in other provinces. You would be good at representing us and give, being our voice. People, that, that's a problem I think we as women have. Um, and also, yes, you're right, our parents, like my own mother was, oh my God, you're gonna be involved in politics. She had this mindset of India, right? And, uh, you know, this dangerous life that you may lead. Uh, but here, my husband, his family, all my friends, um, they were so encouraging. They were absolutely, we want you to be our voice. You're eloquent, uh, you, you're well-spoken, you know what you're talking about, you, you take time to learn the issues. And I was encouraged then just to get involved. And I got involved in the Writing Association first. And, you know, in the years of Mike Harris back in the 90s. And I, that's what I really started to understand. What, what was politics? I actually thought you had to be a lawyer to be a politician. Um, but, <laughs> but, you know, as, as I learn each and every day, we really need a very diverse group of people in legislature, in parliament, because that's the only way you can really get that voice of everybody there. Okay. And that includes women, that includes people of different ages, that includes people of different ethnic backgrounds. Um, and, and, and that includes middle-aged white men too. And, and that's, it, it's so unfortunate that we're here today is that, you know, we need to, you know, we need more diversity, but we still need, you know, middle-aged white men too, you know, and I've heard, you know, when I sit in the legislature and I listen to the, the NDP across like screaming and yelling because, our premiers, middle-aged white man, as are many of our ministers. It's, you know, that's distressing because to me, that's also, uh, that's also reverse racism. Um, and that's, that's unfair as well. But um, I think parents and everybody out there, we need you to be involved in the political process. This is your life. This is the life of your children and your grandchildren. And, and, and very seriously, you need to have a say. Oh. So unless you're representing, unless you're putting somebody there to represent your voice, you really don't have an, an opportunity to complain. You, you can dislike what the government's doing. You can dislike what your MPP is doing. You can dislike the policies that are being brought forward. Um, but unless you try to put somebody there that can represent you, it, it, it's very difficult for you to have that voice. I've been very fortunate. I have to say I have been very, very fortunate that uh, the people that have supported me have uh, backed me up, whether it's signing people up for a nomination, which is probably the hardest part of politics, I think, uh, to, to fundraising, to, to actually being in government, to understanding the, the background of bringing forward a motion or a private member's bill or the full on legislation. I mean, on Monday, I'm putting uh, my private member's motion on stunt driving. We know there's been significant issues, uh, especially during COVID with excess speeding and uh, doing donuts and stunt driving. It's been a serious issue that the general public's been, you know, screaming about. So that's something that I'm bringing forward on Monday, the, the Ministry of Transportation and the Attorney General are backing me on this and they are going to bring full legislation forward in the coming months. So, you know, when you're doing something, you know, will make a difference in people's lives. A positive difference is what you are looking for. I, I think the satisfaction that we get as parents, I think that's where uh, it makes the biggest difference. And to understand that if you get involved in politics, you have power to make change and encouraging people, whether it's females, males, and certainly people of all different ages, I think it's critical and, and we need to do a better job of it. I don't think we've done enough yet, but uh, there's been lots of change and there's more to come. 
Thank you so much for this. Listen, I had a chance to witness uh, elected officials like you and everyone we've had a chance to discuss with today um, in terms of how they do their jobs. It is not easy. It is a huge sacrifice on your families, um, a huge risk to your reputations. There are very many thorny issues to navigate, many of which we talked about today. So as just a a young advisor who watches from afar and admires you all very deeply. Thank you so very much for what you do for your constituents and for what you do for our country. Uh, you're, you're a great credit to us all. Uh, Vipul Ji, thank you so much for having me as a moderator. I, I hope I did uh, a, little, a very good job at staying out of the way, but thank you as well for the incredible work that you do um, in all of the conversations you convene between two countries and all their states and provinces. It's a really special thing. I, I want to hand the floor obviously over back to you. Uh, you may have a few more comments to offer, but uh, I just wanted to wish you all the very best. Stay warm, stay safe. Vipulji, over to you, my friend. Now, before, before that, Shivalai, I'd really like to see you put your name forward and run. <laughs> Well, oh, yes. you know, my mother probably has some views. We'll have to. We'll have to I would it. absolutely concur mm -hmm. with Nina on this. I think surely we need people like you. Yes, we, for we, sure. we will have we will have a conversation with all the strong women in my life, and we'll see what comes of this. Well, <laughs> Thank you. So let's had, find uh, let's uh, find one person who will not agree with that. <laughs> sure. So I show. I also want to thank you for everything you are doing in. Uh, in uh, strengthening our democracy, both here and in uh, in India, because uh, probably of all, uh, all of, of all of us, probably you did a lot of uh, diplomacy work between the two countries. We thank I, you. I, I appreciate that. It's the people who put their name on a ballot that do the work. I'm just privileged to serve that. Thank you. Sure. I have one final question, which uh, which which applies to everyone. Um, you can consider it as a repeat fire question. So now that we are a bit over time, you will each have 30 seconds to reply. <laughs> it's a typical rapid fire round. Um, political leaders, provincially, federally, from Canada, they go on delegations to India all the time, right? Most of the people right now on the panel have been part of delegations to India. So, but what happens after that? You know, I mean, the photo ops, Pictures are taken, handshaken, lunch, dinners. What happens after that? So how do you make them more effective? 30 seconds from each of you. Um, start with Deepakji first, and then Nina ji, and then other people afterwards. Who was the first you said? I didn't hear it. I'm so sorry. You. Oh, OK, me. Thanks. What happens uh, first is first you put the uh, seed, then there's little sampling come. When you take this little sampling from the nursery, we flow it to the other farm and then the big farm comes up. So what happens is when we go to the trade commit, trade mission, we meet people. Not everybody's going to sign MOU. Not everybody's going to come and invest here, but we get leads and we take the leads and we uh, materialize those leads. Some of the things we go back and we use these leads as a, as a showcasing what we did last time, we bring in more business here. So we, I think Nina would uh, talk a bit more about it, but we brought in many, many companies who are physically here now uh, are growing. And that is what is intention of going to these three missions. Um, VVDN and many more companies. Nina, go ahead, please. Yeah, I, just, to, just to add to what Deepak is saying. So uh, when we were on the trade mission uh, in November of 2019, uh, we met with numerous corporate companies who were who were interested in investing in Canada and Ontario, um, and some that are already doing business here. We've managed to secure significant investment uh, in our follow-ups with them, and uh, just recently, two, three, three or four companies have just done. Uh, one did a six million dollar investment. One was a four million dollars, and one of them we're working on right now, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars. So. Um, we do follow up. Our ministry is very much um, working together with uh, with our Indian officials. And one thing that we've done in Ontario, we have our agent generals in New, uh, New Delhi and in Mumbai. So we want to make sure that uh, any companies that are interested in working uh, with our province, that they have access to those, uh, those people there. And um, it is really important, I think, that especially the virtual missions are good and we've, we've managed to do some work with those. 
But the in-person ones, the networking that you're doing on the ground, I think they're critical and they're key. Uh, and I know we've had meetings with uh, Uttar Pradesh and we're putting together a mem memorandum of understanding. Punjab and Ontario had a MOU in the past, which uh, well, we're talking around, but we were actually putting that one together again. So, Nina, don't tell Prasad, please. <laughs> No, you know what? It's collective. What's good for Ontario is good for for Alberta, and uh, we we work together. And I I've had the pleasure of working with many people from Alberta, and and Jason is a, an extremely good friend of mine. And sometimes, you know, you know, when it comes to energy, they've got it all. We've we don't have it, and we need their energy. And um, you know, as we know, Line Five, we have an issue right now with the the Michigan government who is not allowing uh, the gas to come through Michigan that we desperately need in Sarnia here. And, you know, a lot of it's part of what Alberta is doing and the Keystone pipeline, as you know, have been, has been now canceled and that's, that's mm -hmm. dire for Alberta. And, you know, we're uh, all in it together. We're all in it together. I, 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 before Prasad says, I just want to one say one more thing. Should we, uh, I wish Devindaji was here. Or I hope he's listening. It's a survival for the fittest again. I mean, if Ontario or people from Ontario, people from Brampton, Mississauga will have an objection working with India. Saskatchewan is going, go ahead and do business with India. They're doing a wonderful job. India is not relying only on Brampton and Mississauga, not only Ontario. I mean, it's lost opportunity for us if we can't uh, seize that opportunity. Prasad is going to go and build that relationship and get the benefit out of that. Uh, Minister Panda, quick comments from you about how to use sure, the um, yeah, briefly, and then I also have to run. So uh, I appreciate Nena Ji and Deepak for the Team Canada approach. Uh, that, that's what we should be doing. Uh, so uh, Nena Ji made the comment uh, about uh, unfriendly tariffs from India as the opposition critic for trade. I fought, uh, you know, uh, to all levels of Indian government to remove those uh, unfriendly tariffs for our farmers and also those fumigation requirements. In fact, I took our premier then, we, we were in opposition, I took it to um, various federal ministers, central ministers of India and provincial premiers to fight on that. He watched me doing that. That's recently when people started issuing threat, death threats to me here, where told him my job is to represent Alberta and Canada farmers first. So, you know, the same Trudeau goes to WTO to complain about uh, unfriendly tariffs in India, but but for, for his own uh, retail politics, he makes different comments. So I don't do that. I'm not a career politician. So I say the same thing everywhere. But anyway, coming back to Vipulji's question about uh, these uh, trades, I, I never was part of trade delegations. All I did was I paid for my own trips and I did one-man uh, trade missions, except when we took in opposition, pre opposition leader Kenny and uh, Devin Drishan, who is our ag minister now. He, was, uh, he became trade critic. He took over from me. I became energy critic. So... Only that's the time I went with two other guys. Otherwise, I was, because of my own networks, I did it all um, myself. But one suggestion is consistency is more important. So it's not just taking the trade delegation, but to, it, it is an ongoing thing. We had to, uh, because it's an important relationship with India. But we And it's very complex. It's not easy. You know, it's not, it's not the policies that uh, deliver you the results. It's the personal connections and relationships uh, doing trade with India. Uh, that's that's what I learned talking to so many of them. So uh, so consistency and then taking uh, advantage of uh, all levels of uh, government's offices there, whether you have a provincial trade office, federal, we all should work as one team and take advantage because everyone has different strengths like uh, Nina and Deepak said, uh, Alberta is energy and Alberta also is strong on forestry and uh, agriculture. Same thing with Saskatchewan, they have uranium, potash, um, BC has mining, Ontario has manufacturing and many other sectors. Ontario is, uh, FinTech is your, your strength in Toronto. So, um, we are also looking at pharma, biotech, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, yeah, we are working very hard on biotech too. So 
But I, to make it simple, I'll actually connect you with our Minister Doug Schweiger. He's leading our sector-wise strategy uh, to develop that. And uh, probably he's the right guy to comment on that. But uh, specific to India, being Indo-Canadian, because of my own relations, I'm doing it with my own interest outside of my portfolio, which has nothing to do with infrastructure. So. Sure. So just uh, in the next uh, one minute or one and a half minutes, uh, 30 seconds each, please. Uh, if Devinderji, if you are still there, um, maybe you can uh, comment as well. Uh, Devinderji, we introduced in the beginning. He was a former MP for Calgary Northeast from 2008 to 2015. And he was also part of the uh, Committee on International Trade. Devinderji, are you there? Yes, uh, Bipulji. Thank, thank you for giving me this opportunity. And I 100% I agree with the last three speakers. And specifically, this, uh, this needs to be on consistency basis, uh, follow-ups. And obviously, it uh, seems like Ontario is doing the same thing. Uh, and uh, they are getting the result. And in the long term, yes, in the long term, it will be a win-win situation for for all Canada and uh, and and India, and obviously we we being from uh, Indo-Canadian diaspora will be the happiest people to see it see it uh, fruitful for both countries. Uh, countries, uh, uh, I as, as I said before, uh, for six years in a row, I sat on uh, international trade committee, and we did uh, 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 visit Ca India numerous times. Uh, we we have seen with our eyes uh, all the lentils uh, coming uh, on uh, on the shore of uh, mumbai and uh, some somebody before also made the comment that government of india from time to time they change their levies and tariffs uh, depend, depending on their uh, demand uh, so we we uh, as canadian we also need to be on top of it uh, that what is in demand there and uh, and and long term relationship uh, uh, is always good. Alberta, as I as everybody said that uh, every province in Canada or most of the provinces in Canada have unique resources. They are good at the unique side of the business, and we should all work together as Team Canada, and uh, for the benefit of both Canada and India. Thank you, and it will be fruitful. Thank you, Hazaji, your quick comments, how to make uh, the uh, Thanks, uh, Vipulji. Uh, well, let me say it this way. It, it has all been said. It's about relationship. It's about uh, personal uh, contact. And, uh, and, and that's what matters here. Uh, and people-to-people uh, -people contact is very, very important again. Uh, I would just give you an example. Uh, you see, we had Prime Minister of India visit uh, Canada after a long gap of 42 years. Uh, National Alliance of Indo-Canadians hosted that program. And you see the difference, what happened after that? I mean, prior to that, the trade with India was $5 billion. And right away, it jumped to $8 billion. And despite all these, this, this bumpy ride that has happened after that, in fact, even now, Canadians have invested uh, around $60 billion in India. Um, well, I would say when it comes to trade, India is a land of opportunity at this time. The, the country is on the move. And, and as uh, Shiv said, I mean, 1.4 billion people, uh, there are lots of opportunities. We, let us build bridges. Let's build strong relationship. And that's very important. Thank you. Well, I, with your vast experience, uh, you know, with uh, federal governments, um, including directly with the Prime Minister Harper himself, uh, what's your take? Quick uh, point, how to make the decisions. Leadership matters, that you go with confidence, you take positions with strength, you expect results. And when they don't happen, you hold people accountable until they do. That's my observation. Fantastic. So that brings us to my closing remarks for the event. Um, that was actually indeed a fabulous and engaging conversation. We covered a lot of uh, aspects uh, and we need more dialogue and brainstorming, I would say, like this, you know, to keep uh, Canada-India relations on the right track and uh, to avoid them from being sidetracked uh, because of the non-issues. Thank you all the speakers for uh, participating today. Um, actually, I reached out to 34 Indo-Canadian political leaders, um, you know, 
So I try my best, I mean, as much as I can. Uh, Deepika Dabirla and Ramesh Sangha confirmed, but for some reason have not been able to join us today. Um, those were the only two liberal politicians who confirmed, um, but they, we miss them both. Anyway, so thank you to Shwaloi again, Majumdar, for moderating it today. Um, to Nagasarat Pandurangi, who is invisible, um, but he's helping us on the tech side. Uh, today, to all the IMX sponsors, Tangentia, OnePlace, Skylink, Capital Corp, Pavi Bining, Seneca College, and all the members of the Canada India USA Development Forum. So, with that, the session is now closed. Thank you.